Hi, this is Lori from Beagles and Baubles. Thanks for joining me here for episode number two. Well, today I have a little story for you that I thought was funny that I had to share with you. So, my third child plays soccer at this place called Sportsplex, and there's all kinds of grown ups uh, playing baseball soccer there, as well as children of all ages playing soccer, baseball. So I'm in a place that's a highly know, uh, masculine, kind of dominated energy there, all these sports here. And I hop out the car to take my son, walk him into the soccer practice, and I'm realizing I'm trailing my yarn behind me. Now, not just a couple feet, but I've trailed it about across the half the parking lot. And this couple that's right there says, excuse me, ma'am, your yarn. My yarn is on the ground. It's pretty embarrassing. Gave me a little laugh there. I don't know if any of you have done that yourself before, but this sure gave me a laugh. And the funniest part to me was that I had did that recently. Another time I was at the DMV and I'm sitting in my chair. My son and I had been to the DMV a few times within that week because my son was trying to get his permit and it seemed like we were having issues with, with having all the right documents with us and then it got too late and they were closing. And um, so we had to go back like three times just to get this permit. And I was sitting there working on my cardigan here, which um, I'm gonna share with you. I'm so happy I finally finished my cardigan. Um, so that was the other time I got up and I'm pulling my my ball of yarn is still in by my chair and I'm walking out the doorway and this man had to say, pardon me ma'am, your yarn. So I don't know what my problem is there but I keep doing this lately and it's kind of embarrassing. So my family and I, we just, we just got back from a trip we decided to take off for Thanksgiving and we hate leaving our families. I love cooking. I love eating all the Thanksgiving food. It's so delicious. But um, we took a trip up to the Redwoods to see the giant California Redwoods. You can see my little mug here and it was awesome. So we live in Southern California and we drove all the way up to Oregon, up into Oregon and saw some of the the little um, boating fishing villages there walked on some beautiful beaches and and we stayed in a place called crescent city in california that was right there bordering oregon and we uh, stayed there for three nights and went on some great hikes and had a little bit of seafood i wanted to try the clam chowder but i wasn't impressed by the restaurant we picked all the fast food was very expensive so we did eat some meals in our hotel room also. And, but we loved our, the place we stayed at was called the Lighthouse Inn and it was great. And it was just right across from the water there. And um, the weather was nice. It was a little bit chillier than it is in San Diego. It's been way too hot here. It's been in the eighties. So um, that was nice. Uh, went on some great hikes through the Redwood Forest, saw lots of ferns and and went to this place called the Magic Trees, um, where we, uh, or trees, uh, something like that, where there's these long bridges you get to walk across, and these giant redwoods, and and we also went to um, this town where they make one of my kids' favorite TV shows, uh, Gravity Falls. It's like a funny kids show. We went there, checked out the the area with that, and saw this house that was uh, sideways and we were trying to keep our balance up in the sideways house they built and but they made this whole TV show around. So my oldest son really got a kick out of that and my other kids like to watch it with him too. So that was cool. Um, and so let me show you the knitting. So let me tell you the name again of this because it's so long, long name here. This was one with Marley Bird through Yarn Inspirations, and it's called the Hidden Pocket Seek to Knit Cardigan. And I'm so happy to be done with this. I didn't think it would take that long. 
um, be that big of a project. But doing the steak, that was new to me. I, f I feel like it took longer than doing just a typical knit in the round cardigan. Um, so yeah, I'm pretty impressed. It's, it's, it's a little bit poky through here, but it was nice. I wore it on the trip and I was so cold like the whole time that we were um, in our hotel room. I ended up grabbing my this cardigan and I was wearing this when I was sleeping because I was freezing cold. And this wool, it's a little bit scratchy, but honestly, when you're cold and in that weather, I was able to like do all my hiking in it, wear it under my coat. I was so happy to have it there. So yeah, so you can kind of see, and I didn't button it all the way. Let's get these bottom, but yeah, came out pretty good. So and I love this little cable detailing there. Um, the fits real nice and these pockets were great. So, you can see that. And so I'm really relieved to have that done. Um, also, I'm making some good progress on my son's vest. And I'll tell you, you can see the little uh, cabling, I hope, on here. It's a little bit of cable. Oop, I'm sorry. There you go. A little bit of cable detail there on the front and the back of this. And one by one ribbing. That's one by one ribbing on the bottom. It seemed like the ribbing took the longest for me to get that going. And I was working on this on my trip. But I tell you what, it seemed like every time I was trying to get out my knitting on my trip. My husband, he either wanted me to drive or he wanted me to pay attention so we didn't get lost. And we did get lost pretty good once in LA. The traffic and all the um, the freeway detours for all the construction they're doing right now is pretty bad. So this is the yarn I'm using for this vest and it's Alpaca Cloud DK Weight. It's 100% baby alpaca. It's so soft, I love it. I really wanna get some more of this. And it has a little bit of like, you can see like little, the halo of the, the fibers. Um, it's really nice. So that's for my son. I wish it was for myself and I might try it on for sure before I give him that. And this pattern is called the, I've showed this to you guys already, I believe, and told you I was gonna make this. It's the British School Slipover. And this is a folk fest book I bought and I saw this pattern on Ravelry but it wasn't available anymore. I actually had to order the book, do a little googling and order it from an outside website and I was able to get it used so it wasn't too expensive. It's by Cheryl Oberl and this lady, um, I guess she's a pretty well-known designer and author. So um, there's lots of vest patterns in here, all kinds of all kinds of things. I kind of like this um, bookworm vest. Just different, different constructions in here, um, and some color work, which I haven't done much color work. I I would like to try something with some color work to do the practicing. Um, everyone's always talking about how neat the back of their color work is and showing showing how they're carrying over their yarn and stuff. So. I'd like to do a little practicing. There's like all kinds of different types of vests, which is pretty cool. And I guess vests are in right now. I didn't realize that vests were popular. Of course, when my son asked me for a vest like a year ago, they weren't as popular as they are now. So what else? Um, also, I'm making good progress on my socks. These are just some vanilla socks and it's out of this yarn, which I thought I was going to be able to finish this um, in October or November, but I'm still working on this. This is the second one. I decided I was going to make both socks simultaneously, like different needles, but I was going to try to keep get the progress to the same point before I began the next um, part of the sock so that they're going to be done pretty close together. So. I've got two of these guys going and I didn't want to like not use enough of my yarn and make real shorty socks because I've did that with one of my last pairs of yarn so I've got 
quite a bit of yarn left, but I were size 10 foot um, shoe, so, so I need quite a bit for the toe portion of my sock. So also I'm doing the contrasting heel and cuff in, in this, this color on the top. So um, I wanted to make sure I had enough, like see how much I need for the toe and whatnot. So yeah, what else? I just want to get these projects out the way. Oh, I'm going to start working on my anchors cardigan again, the one that I, that got felted at my house. And I decided with my sweaters from now on, I'm going to hand wash them. I'm not going to wash them in my washing machine. That's what I have been doing um, with my other sweaters. And, and I got a really nice comment from a viewer that was very thorough going over like how felting actually happens. Um, and it was saying like possibly just like the washing in the soap, the soap that you use, say hi Penny, could cause the felting. So, so possibly, um, it was just the fact that I washed it in the washer machine and I also got some really nice wool wash, um, in a grapefruit scent and I used that on my sweater on this one and I washed my hand and it worked fine. And I did it in my sink. I always hear people talking about doing it in the sink and I feel like it's kind of gross because like the, my sinks are not always the cleanest with four children and and husband and myself. But um, but it was fine. I just scrubbed out the sink and made sure I got rid of all of the cleaning soap first before I, before I put it in there with the wool wash. And uh, I rolled it up in a towel like I had read uh, people do that so so that worked out pretty well and so here's all my yarn for my anchors cardigan I'm gonna do and I'm excited that'll be my next sweater for myself and I hope you all are doing well on this December 1st I'm so glad that November's over I had my my youngest just turned six it's November 26th and and my third child he's gonna turn 11 on December 8th so that's coming up and it was being out of town for a week I feel like November was super long so so happy December and I'll talk to you all soon bye